Hello, let's look at technological change inside the solo growth model. The assumption is that technological progress only affects labor, not capital, in the solo model. Labor augmenting technological progress is an increase in labor productivity that does not directly make capital more efficient. In the solo model, technological progress is treated very similar to population growth. Let's show how the production function accounts for technological progress. So here's our production function, Y is output, it's a function of capital, labor, where labor is being multiplied by E. E represents the efficiency of labor. It captures society's understanding of the best ways to produce goods and services. As technology improves, new methods of production or organization, E increases and the efficiency of labor rises. E may also increase from investments in health, education, training, just increases in human capital in general. We're going to let G equal the growth rate in the efficiency of labor. So E again is the efficiency of labor. G will be the growth rate in that variable. So rewriting our production function. L times E is going to be efficiency units of labor. Labor will now be measured in efficiency units or effective units or effective workers, for example. We're going to assume L grows at rate N, so population growth here at rate N. And again, like I mentioned, we're going to assume E grows at rate G. So efficiency units of labor, L times E, is growing at N plus G. Y is output, K is capital. In terms of output per efficiency unit of labor, we're going to define lowercase y as the output or GDP per efficiency unit of labor, which is y divided by L times E. Capital per efficiency unit of labor is now capital divided by L times E. It's just not capital divided by L, it's capital divided by efficiency units of labor, and lowercase k is used to represent that. So in general, a lowercase letter measures a variable, capital, output, investment, etc., on a proficiency unit of labor basis. Let's talk about break-even investment, lowercase i, the amount of investment per efficiency unit of labor to keep the capital per efficiency unit of labor constant. And here is the equation. DK is the investment necessary to replace depreciated capital. NK is the investment necessary to replace dilution of capital from population growth. And finally, GK is the investment necessary to replace dilution of capital from growth in efficiency units of labor. Dilution of capital from improvements in technology that increase efficiency units of labor. So here is capital per efficiency unit of labor. Let's let E equal to 1. So in this case, the capital per efficiency unit of labor is 2. 200 divided by 100. If E increases by 2%, E will now equal 1.02. K needs to increase 2% to hold the capital per efficiency unit of labor constant at 2. So just mathematically here. So if E increases by 2%, it'll be now 1.02. That means the numerator, capital, needs to increase by 2% to keep lowercase k, capital per efficiency unit of labor, constant at 2. So a change in k, capital per effective worker, or capital per efficiency unit of labor, can write like this, where investment can be thought of as S times Y, where Y is just the production function on a per efficiency unit of labor basis. And in the steady state, the change in lowercase k, capital per efficiency unit of labor, is going to be zero. And uh, let me mention the golden rule here quickly. The level of capital accumulation 
this K star that maximizes consumption per efficiency unit of labor. So here is consumption per efficiency unit of labor. All right, let's do a problem. Here we have our production function, constant return to scale. Let's get output per efficiency unit of labor. I'm going to divide the right-hand side and the left-hand side through by L times E. So the left-hand side now is just lowercase y. We have this on the right-hand side, which we'll define as now just lowercase k raised to the one-half power. Let's assume the depreciation rate is 0.1, the population growth rate is 0.03, and technological growth rate is 0.02. And the saving rate here is 0.45. So again, the key condition here in the steady state, the change in the capital per efficiency unit of labor is zero. So setting the left-hand side equal to zero, and now plugging all our values into this equation for S, for D, for N, for G. Y here is just the, the production function, K to the one-half power. And now we're going to solve this for K. So we're doing some simplification. Dividing here by 0 0.15. Just rewriting the last step. And simplifying here, dividing everything through by k to the one-half. Right-hand side now is just k to the one-half power. And squaring, we have our steady state capital per efficiency unit of labor equal to 9. Plugging that into our production function, we get the steady state output per efficiency unit of labor at 3. We can get our investment per efficiency unit of labor, 0 0.45 times y, which is 3, or 1.35. Uh, the steady state saving per efficiency unit of labor, saving equals investment. So it's also 1.35. We can get the consumption per efficiency unit of labor simply by taking y minus i. And we get 1.65 here. Uh, D times K here in the steady state is going to be 0 0.9. Following growth rates in the steady state for these variables are 0. So the growth rates in anything measured on a proficiency unit of labor basis is zero in the steady state. These things stay constant. Now let's look at the steady state output per worker, which is different than output per efficiency unit of labor or output per effective worker. So let's get output per worker growth rates in the steady state. So if we were to do that, output per worker, is just y divided by l, and that's just going to equal this lowercase y times e. And y star is constant, but e grows, deficiency of labor grows at 2%, so output per worker grows at 2% per year in the steady state. So again, this is somewhat confusing. Output per efficiency unit of labor does not grow in the steady state, but output per worker does once we incorporate technological change, technological improvements. So the good news here is that uh, technological progress is a factor that explains continuously rising living standards in the solo model. It's the only factor that does that. The steady state capital per worker growth rate so a capital per efficiency unit of labor. And then we just get on the left-hand side, capital per worker. 
So K star is constant in the steady state, but E grows, efficiency of labor grows at 2%, so capital per worker is also growing at G in the steady state. We can do a similar thing for consumption per worker. So consumption per worker grows at a constant rate of 2%. And steady state investment or saving per worker is going to be growing, again, at G or 2%. Uh, let's look at total output. So this is just real GDP. This is not real GDP per capita. This is not real GDP per worker. This is not real GDP per efficiency unit of labor. It's just total GDP. So we can back into that. So Y total output, total GDP equals the following. So L grows at N, E grows at G, so output or real GDP grows at N plus G or 5%. Just technically output grows at the following rate of N plus G plus N times G. Um, N times G is going to be small when dealing with low growth rates, so we can generally ignore that. That's why textbooks generally ignore that. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I hope you found this video helpful.